Newton's first law of inertia states that an object stays in motion with the same speed and direction unless acted on by an external force. Normally a car and its occupants move around at the same speed, but when an external force is applied to the car, in this case by the crash test block, the occupants continue to move forward at the same speed until a force is applied to them. This resistance to a change in motion is called inertia, and it applies even when the velocity is zero. It's this property that enables people to do things like this. The china on the table stays pretty much at rest, even when the tablecloth's pulled from under it. That's because there's not enough sideways frictional force to overcome the china's inertia and get it to move. Back to the crash test. Because they're not wearing seat belts, inertia means the occupants of this car continue travelling forwards until the windscreen applies the force to stop them. Let's look at the inertia here. You can see the vehicle coming forward, it's stopping, but the occupants carry on because there's nothing stopping them carry on. That's the basic Newton's law here. So you can see the occupants, because they're unrestrained, the driver has um, hit the steering wheel and the whole steering column has crushed around him. You can see he's partially ejected and would be severely injured. Um, the poor passenger, even though he was in the back of the car, protected by the front seat, because he's not res restrained, he goes through the front seat and he's gone through the windshield and you can see his head still sticking out there. Of course, in real life, you get a lot less time to regret not doing up your seatbelt. Newton's first law gives us the idea that in a car crash, things keep going until something stops them. First used in the 1950s, seatbelts provide an external force that counteracts the passenger's inertia, bringing them to a halt in a more controlled way. But they're just one of the ways car designers reduce the forces on the occupants in the event of a crash. And every car designer also needs to understand the principle behind Newton's second law of motion.